August 10, 1985, Ruth Cooper, aged 42, and her boyfriend Stephen Harkins, aged 27, planned a week-long trip to Tool Lake located in Pierce County. They were all from break at the vocational school where they currently worked at. Around this time, the bodies of couples were piling up around the Pacific Northwest. When Cooper and Harkins did not return to work that following Monday, they were both reported missing by family members. Four days later, Stephen's body would be discovered by hikers. Stephen Harkins was found dead inside of his sleeping bag, shot in the head. Not too far away, the couple's dog was also found deceased. He was shot. Police frantically searched for Ruth Cooper, who they believed was also the victim of a homicide. Authorities started to believe that maybe, perhaps, Ruth was kidnapped. Two months later, a skull was found near Hart's Lake, just a mile and a half away from where Stephen's body was found. Dental records positively identified the skull to be that of Cooper's. Not long after, the rest of her remains were found with no clothing on. Cooper was shot in the stomach with a tube sock tied around her throat. Police believed that the tube sock was used as a restraining method rather than that of a weapon. Police wondered if maybe perhaps the double killing that occurred about a year ago was a possible connection. Couples Edward Smith and Kimberly Levine from the Kent Tacoma metropolitan area in Seattle were also murdered. The couple met while attending Dartmouth. After graduating in 1984, the couple decided to settle in Kent, Washington. They both worked as government accountants and were excited to start their new life together and were already engaged to be married. Sadly, that day would never come. On March 9, 1985, the couple decided to have a romantic weekend getaway in Grand County off I-90. They were excited to explore the beautiful scenery in the area. The following day, Edward Smith's body was found in a gravel pit close to the Wanapum Dam. His hands tied behind his back and his throat was slit. His ID and wallet were missing. Police were able to identify Smith when he was reported missing by his employer. A search was conducted for Kimberly Levine. Two weeks later, the couple's vehicle was found abandoned 10 miles away from where Smith's body was discovered. A single fingerprint belonging to that of Kimberly Levine was discovered, but still no sign of her. A few weeks later, Levine's lifeless body was discovered. This was on the same month that Harkins and Cooper were also found. Her body was found in sagebrush two miles away from her fiancé. On December 12, 1985, 36-year-old Mike Reamer and his girlfriend, 21-year-old Diana Robertson, decided to travel from Pierce County to their home in Tacoma with hopes of planning the perfect camping trip together. It was nearing Christmas, and the couple were also hoping to find a Christmas tree while camping. The couple also brought along their two-year-old daughter, Crystal Louise Robertson. And that same night, little Crystal Robertson would be found walking alone along a Kmart, 30 miles away in Spanaway. She was identified through the local news by her grandmother. Her grandmother asked her where mom was, and she simply replied that mommy was in the trees. But it was not until that same winter in February of 1986 that Diana Robertson's body was found by a man walking his dog. Located near the couple's truck, her body was found off a lodging road, far from Mineral, Washington. She was partially buried in six inches of snow. Blood stains were also found inside of the truck with a note allegedly written by Reamer that said, I love you. Diana's mother would quickly identify the handwriting as that of being Reamer's. FBI at the time, however, thought otherwise and believed that there was a possibility that the handwriting could have been that of the serial killers, allegedly. They also believed that it would have been unlikely for Reamer to have left his car behind, being that his winter coat was found inside. An autopsy revealed that Diana was stabbed approximately 17 times with a tube sock tied around her neck. Forensics were not able to identify to whom the blood belonged to, but rather that it was human blood. Authorities later found out that Reamer was accused of domestic assault by his girlfriend Diana, alleging that he kicked in her apartment door, threw her to the floor, and, and rubbed her face into the carpet. There were visible marks on her face. Two more complaints had been made between the pair. A restraining order was granted, 
but the couple ignored the restrictions to get back together. Although the cases were severe, Reamer was only charged with misdemeanor offenses. Police believe that Reamer might have killed his girlfriend, left his daughter Crystal at Kmart, 30 miles away, and fled. Diana's sister also spoke out about the violence that Reamer inflicted on Diana and added that, that Reamer would blame Diana for things that he did like cheating and would, and would turn it around on Diana with mental and physical abuse. After Reamer went missing, his father had also agreed that maybe perhaps foul play was involved being that his son always carried a 22 caliber with him while out in the woods. 22 caliber casings were found not too far away from the pickup truck but weren't sure being that at that time a 22 caliber gun was very common although Diana wasn't shot. This suggested that someone opened fire for unknown reasons. On March 26, 2011, a hiker was in the woods not too far from Mineral, a mile away from where Diana's body was found. The hiker spotted a discarded vacuum cleaner lifting it up, finding a skull. The skull was positively identified as being that of Reamers. Not too far after, a jawbone and a pair of rubber boots were found. No trauma on the skull was found. Some, some speculate that Reamer could have returned to the scene of a crime and committed suicide. Others believe that the body was just well concealed. While Reamer was at times violent towards Robertson, some don't believe that he is capable of killing three people. Some believed that he was not capable of leaving his daughter alone 30 miles away at a local Kmart. And if he did indeed set up the killing, he would have been covered in blood, making the trip back to his car obviously risky for him. There were also similar coincidences with both cases being that both couples were about 15 years apart from each other in age. It was also noted that after Reamer's death, there were no more reports of homicides involving the signature tube sock in the area. His knowledge of the area where he set traps and the fact that he owned a 22 caliber as well as his uncontrollable violence against his girlfriend may have raised a few eyebrows. In 1989, police solved the murders of both Stephen Smith and Kimberly Levine. A positive fingerprint was linked to Billy Ray Ballard Jr. months after the killings. He was arrested for the abduction, rape, and torture of two women in Wyoming. He immediately confessed to the murders and pleaded guilty at trial. He was sentenced to life in prison. 100 miles away from the murders on November of 1987, 20-year-old Jay Cook an 18-year-old Tanya Van Kylenberg traveled from Canada to purchase parts for Cook's father's business. They were last seen alive boarding a ferry in Bremerton. Tanya's body would later be found in a ditch near Alger. She was bound, raped, and shot in the head. Her wallet and keys were found at a nearby Greyhound gas station. Cook's body was later found 60 miles away from where Tanya was found. He was beaten and strangled. In 2018, through DNA analysis, police positively identified William Earl Talbot to be that of the killer. He is currently serving two life sentences at Washington State Penitentiary. 37 years have passed, and the chances of new evidence showing up on most of these crimes has dwindled. Some believe that the killers responsible for these heinous crimes have been solved, while others believe that somewhere rests a killer who got away with murder. If you or someone you know has more information on the killings that occurred in 1985 near Mineral, Washington, please contact the Lewis County Sheriff's Office at 360-748-9121. That's 360-748-9121. You can remain anonymous.